This video is sponsored by PGY Tech. More on them later in this video. There's not many decisions you can make in street photography that are as simple, affordable, and freeing as shooting with vintage lenses. Compared to buying a modern autofocus prime lens, you will save a lot of money, but it's important that you know how to get the best out of shooting with vintage lenses in a street photography context. If you have yet to invest in any vintage glass whatsoever, you're watching this video at the right time because I have some advice for you. You can avoid having to use chunky lens adapters like this if you're adapting to a mirrorless camera and if you avoid buying lenses that were designed for SLR bodies. Instead, you can opt for lens adapters designed for rangefinder bodies. This is the size of an SLR lens adapted to a mirrorless Sony, and this is the size of a rangefinder lens adapted to a Sony mirrorless. It's like downsizing from normal Yoda to baby Yoda. SLR adapted lenses are going to be much bigger when adapted to mirrorless cameras because they have to increase the distance between the rear element of the lens and the sensor. You will notice this is going to be smaller if you're adapting to DSLRs, but it's something to be mindful of. However, if we use a rangefinder mount lens like this M39 mount, the lens can go much, much closer to the sensor because in the rangefinder there was no mirror between the film plane and the rear element of the lens. Looking again at my Minolta lens adapted to my Sony E-mount and then my Canon lens adapted to my Sony E-mount, you can see just how much of a difference this distance makes. This is the Sony 50mm f1.8 on the Sony a7C. This is genuinely a small mirrorless setup, but with that 35mm you save a lot more space and weight. If you are considering adapting vintage lenses purely for street photography, I would urge you to not really consider anything above 35mm in the short term, because a lot of the benefits you're gonna see from adapting a manual focus vintage lens is gonna be from having a wider field of view and zone focusing. So this 35mm M39 mount is a very good example, and this 28mm Minolta MD mount is also a very good and affordable example. The reason for this is because these wider focal length lenses tend to have deeper zones of focus compared to longer focal length lenses. Having these deeper zones of focus means that even in a fast moving street setting, you're going to get more in focus with a wider field of view rather than trying to go down to something like f2.8 on a 50mm and struggling to get anything in focus in a fast moving environment. Shooting with a deeper depth of field is something that you'll start to feel is actually more important when shooting street photography as you go on compared to shooting like long focal lengths at 85mm, 50mm, at f1.8 or something like that. Focusing with wider focal length lenses and having more of your composition in focus will help you develop much faster and much better as a street photographer rather than relying on background blur as like a compositional tool. Using f-stops like f8, f11 and f16 will make this process a lot easier and you'll get used to shooting with deeper zones of focus quickly and responsively in a street photography setting. Let's demonstrate why using this Minolta 28mm. Looking at this Minolta 28mm f2.8 as an example, noticing these zone marks and their indicated f numbers, you can see the close point of focus and far point of focus become further apart. So at f8, we can see our close point of focus is 1.5 meters all the way up to infinity at our far point. And then at f16, we see 0.9 meters all the way to infinity. This becomes a massive advantage. And if you're shooting on a bright sunny day, you can shoot at f16 and get pretty much everything within reasonable focus. If at the moment you're used to shooting things with shallow depth of field and more wide open apertures, this might take some getting used to. But in terms of shooting street photography, being more responsive and getting much more in focus within your compositions, this is gonna really help you develop. When it comes to shooting with these lenses on mirrorless cameras or even DSLRs, it's important not to use your viewfinder too much for nailing critical focus. Because the advantage of shooting on these wider vintage lenses is the fact that we can do things light zone focus and that helps us be quicker rather than slowing down to critical focus in a fast moving street scene. Using the viewfinder for rough framing is very, very good, but using it for critical focus will just slow you down. Something I always think about is, what's the difference between my viewfinder up here and my viewfinder down here? For me, I find having my camera down here is actually a bit better for a lot of subjects because I'm a bit tall and having my camera down here means my perspective is parallel with more of my subjects. It's the same reason that when I'm taking photos of dogs, I have my camera all the way at the ground versus from my eye level looking down on them. And if you're worried about not nailing critical focus by not looking through your viewfinder, once you can learn your close point of focus with zone focusing, 
you don't really need to look to see if you're in focus. As long as you know like what 1.5 meters is, for example, anything past that is gonna be sharp. One thing I was not immediately aware of when I started shooting with vintage lenses was the fact that some lenses choose either meters or feet for measuring distance. My Minolta 28 millimeter luckily has both, so it was never really a concern for me. But then I have a couple of M39 lenses now. My 50 millimeter Indostar is in meters. However, my Canon 35 is actually in feet. So for me, I typically think in meters. So it's just a little bit of brain calculation to like have good reference points that you should probably be aware of when you're considering new lenses. This segment of this video is sponsored by PGY Tech. A big benefit of shooting with wider focal length vintage glass is being able to shoot a little bit more blind than always having to look right through your viewfinder. By learning the width of your field of view of your lens and learning your focus distance, you're able to shoot certain shots without completely looking and disturbing a scene. This allows you to focus on being more naturally a part of a scene and just noticing subjects in your periphery that you might find interesting. This is mainly a benefit for candid street photography, but it's also very good for catching fast moments in crowds. Using camera straps like this PGY Tech wrist strap means that you can kind of just carry on being natural in the street, lifting your camera here and there to grab shots without drawing attention to yourself. I particularly like using wrist straps when I go out shooting just on my own for a dedicated photo walk because it means your camera is always gripped in your hand and you're ready to go. But you also know it's secure in case you're daydreaming, you drop your camera, it's gonna be totally safe. A big benefit of the PGY Tech strap system is the fact that it's actually a quick swap. So just by pressing in here, you can take off your wrist strap and then you're able to mount it onto both points using the shoulder strap. So you can go from using it on a wrist to go to using it on a shoulder, just like that. When I'm out shooting, sometimes I'll actually keep both straps on me. So I'll use the camera strap and I'm kind of moving between spots. And then I can keep the wrist strap on myself like a bracelet because we actually have this little magnet point to help to keep it nice and tidy. And then when you wanna swap over, you can just move onto the wrist strap and put the camera strap in your bag or jacket pocket. A benefit I find of using a camera strap like this while I'm shooting street as well, particularly with wider focal length zone focusing lenses, means that you can carry the camera kind of at your torso height and then just press the shutter using your thumb in a bit more of a casual, nonchalant kind of way and not drawing attention to the fact that you might be grabbing a couple of shots. This is particularly effective if you're shooting with a camera that has a quieter shutter or even like a silent mode. This means you can just move in between crowds and almost blind fire with a wide focal length to see what you can get without distracting people. If you're looking for a nice camera strap system that's really high quality, super durable, and these straps have this quick swap system so you can put anchors onto your different cameras and then swap between as and when you need to if you're someone that carries two or three cameras on a shoot. Check out my link in the description where you can get a discount on these PGY Tech camera straps and thank you to PGY Tech for sponsoring today's video. Before we finish, I have one last thing I'd like to share with you. The key benefit I found from shooting with vintage lenses or manual focus lenses on digital cameras, on mirrorless cameras, has been the freedom that it has given me. Rather than always looking through my viewfinder, trying to nail focus, waiting for autofocus to confirm on a subject, just knowing distances, just knowing zone focus, becomes so much easier. Sometimes you don't even have to look. You don't have to worry if the autofocus jumps onto a tree or a person's face. You know everything's gonna be in focus. And I always try and remember, for many decades, autofocus did not exist. And people got on just fine with manual focus, wide lenses, in fast moving street photography. And this is a skill that I think is valuable for shooting on both digital and if you start shooting on film a bit more. Shooting film and street photography can be stressful if you're trying to nail critical focus looking through your viewfinder, but if you're just doing it in zone focus, you'll actually hit more moments than you think, and especially those fast moving candid moments. If using manual focus lenses like this is interesting to you for zone focusing, check out this video here on a mirrorless camera with a third party manual focus lens that's super convenient and lightweight for zone focusing.